and when they began to sing yes. and to praise the Lord, hallelujah, and to praise rather, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. My brothers and my sisters, I want to inform us this morning that it is
come on, just raise your hands. Extend them above your heads. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. Grant unto him majesty. Let's just get into it today. With all of our voices, with all of our hearts, we have come to Father's house. Come on, open your mouth. Extend your hands. Hallelujah. your mercies endure it forever let's go ahead and give him some extended worship extended praise extended adoration fill the house with glory fill the house with his praise he's here he's here he is here oh we magnify you Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah is your name, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Mighty warrior, dress for battle, clothed in glory, suspendious majesty. What a day to be alive. What a day to be in Father's house. Come on, give him thunderous claps. Glorious praise. Hallelujah. Oh, the Lamb of God. We thank you. And we praise you. you. Oh, hallelujah. 
Let him embrace you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. I love you. Yes, I love you, Lord, today. Bishop Dr. Deborah George Owens and Pastor Owens. Welcome, sir. Welcome, lady. Welcome, welcome. A special welcome also to the other members of our executive leadership, Pastor Garrett and 
Lola Derek, uh, Pastor Maxine Riley, Prophet Bernard. Oh, what a beautiful worship led. Worship team, Pastor Johnson, both of you, bless God. Bless God, bless God. Thank you, we thank you. The elders in the house, the Lady Madri, Lady Arendt. Um, I see Pastor Jo, um, Elder George and his wife. Huh? Lady Gina, welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, a special welcome also to Minister Wendy Hire. Welcome, welcome, Lady of God, woman of God. Glad to have you. Welcome, welcome. And as we continue our welcome, I am blessed and privileged to be a part of a family of God, a genuine family of God. Musicians, I was so blessed today. Thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you. And let me begin with continue the announcements beginning with this one, it says, join us online on Monday at 7 p.m. as Team 2 concludes the prior for the month of March. Team 2 is led by Elder Marjorie Daniels and Sister Faye Parks. I'm sure we would know who those persons are, but for your own development and strengthening the Lord, participate on a Monday night team prior at 7 p.m. Make it an appointment with God. We want to express sincere thanks to those persons who assisted the welfare department yesterday in the feeding distribution downtown. Sister, we want to say, can you see Sister Andrea Brown for participating in that department? We want to say a big thank you. Big up on the Yeah, man. That's what we are about. Kingdom this thing. Yes. Great, great, great. The Children and Youth Ministry will be held on Saturday, April 2, 22 at 10 a.m. We continue with that. The department is still seeking volunteers to help with our children and ministry in that area. So make it your own personal mission to participate and seek out Brother Jermaine and uh, Lady Dobson and add your support in that area. Black, there is a Black History, Black History Month will be celebrated by Generation J Genesis on April 9, 2022. Lunch will be served at 1 p.m. followed by a concert at 3.30 p.m. We are requesting your help in making the day a rewarding one. Please speak with Pastor Jermaine Henry or Pastor Maxine Riley for further details. The flyer and promotional video was sent out in our emails and our WhatsApp. I hope you saw two lovely people in some gold and some bright colors on there going on with a thing or two and not even any, no, no, you don't have to look at it. Yes, man, participate, participate, yeah. participate. Additionally, as we continue to build the youth and that gener generation Genesis um, team and the church for the, our mission to impact a nation by building apostolic communities for end time believers. I want us to know that we have a bond sale. I have a flyer here. Not sure if we have it up and you can see it, but it's this for the Easter season. We want to give to build our community and the communities around us. And we have a bond sale price starting as low as 800 Jamaican dollars for all of a size of 28 ounce bond, going up to $1,400 for a 48 size ounce bond. Even if you don't eat bond, Get a bond and give a family so into other persons. Get a bond and give to your neighbor. Get a bond and offer someone and be, be Jesus that they see. Yes. Think of them and just surprise them. Bless you with this sister. So support the ministries for a cause. We want to touch a child. We want to feed a family. And the Generation Genesis team is working hard. I appeal to you. You are kingdom people, I don't have to beg you. I am appealing to you. Yes. 
get up and do something, get involved. God is no man's debtor and he will be rewarded. Hallelujah. Words of the wise is sufficient. As I continue, want to remind us that the usual protocols for hand sanitizing, temperature checks, and wearing of masks on Sunday mornings in the sanctuary is still being held. We are still in that sensitive time. And we also want to be an example to the rest of the world and Jamaica that we're leading by example. So we're still honoring those protocols. And please remember to sit where the ushers have directed us. And as I continue with the announcements, come partner with us. What are we partnering for, saints of God? Come partner with us. What are we partnering to do? We're doing what? Hallelujah. We're building a what? We're building a sanctuary unto God. Catch a vision. Hallelujah. And as we build that, we say, ask how to become a love and faith. World Out Ministries partner. The details can be had through our offices at 876-929-3968 or 876-929-3969. You can also contact us on WhatsApp at 876-871-0269. That's 876- 8710269 or email us at love and faith partnership dot jm at gmail.com. Let me repeat that love and faith partnership dot jm at gmail.com. Registration is still ongoing for the partner plan. And you can WhatsApp Elder Marjorie Daniels at 876-422-9320. Or, three options we have, you know, or Mr. and Mrs. Audley Matthews at 876-469-2155. Or Sister Olga Gray at 876-420. 1014. We thank you for your participation. Banking details are as follows. Partner plan banking details. Make sure you have your pen and your pencils. Write it down. Take a picture if it's on the screen using your screenshot. And it says Love and Faith World Outreach Ministries. That's the name of writing on the account. Bank, National Commercial Bank. Savings account. Ready? One seven four zero four two seven seven two. And the branch code, especially for our international partners for your wires, is zero 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 six. So that's four zeros and six. And the SWIFT code as well for our international partners is JNCB JMKX. All right, so that is for our partner plan. And as I continue with our notices, want to remind you that the church office remains open. When, when is our church office open? Let's hear all the bright sparks. Whoa, whoa, hallelujah. So our church office remains open Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. PM, and we have a faithful servant. She's always helpful, Lady Suzanne. We are grateful to you. Yeah. We are grateful to the administrative team for always being on call for us. We bless God for you. Amen, amen, amen. And just before I read the bishop's message, all the birthday people, you know, last week I was so out of place and forget to pick up people on their birthday. Can you imagine that? People like Sophia Forbes, big up Sophie, happy birthday. Where is Chrisanne's degree? Chrisanne, I saw you this morning, happy birthday. And Mr. Atkinson, happy, happy birthday, where are you, in here? Happy birthday, I hope you're online. 
Zoe, happy birthday, my lord. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. I will have some more birthdays, you know. Brother Pete Scott, are you here, sir? I hear the song. Brother Scott, happy birthday when we get there tomorrow, sir. Happy birthday. And young um, Lenval Matthews, are you here? Happy birthday. We bless God for you. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. We bless God for you. We also have an anniversary on the 29th. That is Mr. and Mrs. Linval Matthews. Ooh, happy anniversary to you. You know, we don't have the voice for that right there to feel all those things. <laughs> happy anniversary. We thank God for your union. We thank you for standing as an example in the house of the Lord for all of us to aspire to be there. So we bless God. And as we settle down and meditate on our leadership and some of words of wisdom, I want to read you the bishop's message. Please listen. As we rise up in our spirit to build a sanctuary unto the Lord, we do so with much optimism and faith. Oh God. We have chosen the book of Nehemiah, which speaks to us of a people who came out of captivity to rebuild their city, its walls, temple, and their homes, signifying their return to God whom they had forsaken. The charge was led by Ezra, a priest and scribe, and then by Nehemiah, a notable leader who was passionate in his nation to see his nation rebuilt. Although Nehemiah was a good leader, he could not build the walls of the city alone. Let me repeat that. Although Nehemiah was a good leader, he could not build the walls of the city alone. He needed many people to help him. He organized the work and gave each person responsibility for their area. He gave each person a responsibility. Notably, the walls were rebuilt Gates were repaired, doors, bolts, and bars were put in place. Doors and gates allowed, allowed in some things and kept out many things. The people did not think they were too important for help, for in helping, they were protecting their own lives and that of their families as well. In a time where women were sheltered and men did work within their homes, they too came out and worked on the walls and the gates. They saw the need and broke out of tradition, were, were enabled by God to work. What a testimony. Ah, clearly the work was hard. But the many hands caused the work to be finished in record time. Clearly the work was hard, but the many hands caused the work to be finished in record time. So today, call forth the walls of the sanctuary. Call forth the walls of the sanctuary, its doors and bolts and bars. Declare that the work shall be finished. God will be honored. The name, his name will be glorified and the mouths of the enemies shall be shut. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless God. Thank you, Jesus. As we ask the ushers to give out the envelopes and we prepare for worshiping God with our giving, I am going to ask the Johnsons if they can say, Jehovah, you, if they can worship with us, Jehovah, you are God. Um, as we have that going, I just want to, 
while we prepare the, the offering and the ushers come and you have your envelopes, I want to just also say that the tickets for April 9 are ready. Yes. Pastor Jermaine and Maxine Riley will the tickets are ready and they will be available to support um pastor Jermaine and the team will be at the back of the sanctuary at the end of the service to facilitate those persons who know all of us who will be supporting the ministry and taking a ticket all of us who will be supporting generation genesis and taking a ticket persons who are interested in joining the dance, dance ministry please speak to lady peter gay peter gay everybody know who know peter gay is and lady tracy ann tracy ann everybody know who tracy ann is say yes yes, yes. um at the back so that we can um participate in the dance ministry Jehovah is your name, yes. myself and these, the, the correct names of the worship songs. And as they minister to us and you come with your offering, starting from the back, we ask you to proceed with your giving. Jehovah is your name. Oh God, you have been a faithful father. Your mercy. 
Jesus. Amen. Amen. And as we welcome Bishop to the lectern, we ask the worship team to continue. Jehovah is your name. of the Lord marinate you, saturate you, elevate you. It is your father's house. It is our daddy's place. We are coming to his living room. We have passed his veranda. We are at the point of getting very comfortable with him. Sometimes we rush to work. We drop the children to school. We take wifey to work or husband. We come home and we look after the house. And before you know it, another day has passed. But when we think of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, we think of how many times he has healed the children, how many times he has delivered us from having paid the duck bill, the prescription bill, healed us from a common cold, put some food in the cupboard, touch somebody's heart far and near to remember us. Then we have to reflect on the goodness of the mighty warrior. Come on! Oh, 
worship him. Not just worship him. Not just that tour here. Not just Jerry Flex before him. of this sort where my spirit my soul my body are all inclined to chill and relax and absorb the weightiness of his parousia I can feel at home no matter what distress no matter what yearning or longing, I have a God, I have a friend, and I have a place that when I come together, yes, in that secret place, in that secret place, in that secret place, into my chamber if this come on just let it go let it go let your hear down
outburst. Just go in and express yourself. Just go in and praise your God and your King. Just go in and go ahead. Go ahead. Lavish yourself. Yes, Lord. Nobody to me like Jesus. Nobody to me like Jesus. I can love on him. I can love on him. I can love him in the morning. Love him in the evening. Love him at night. Love him in the wee hours of the morning. I can love him with my voice. I can love him with my praise. I can be lavish with my worship. I can be intimate with him. I can caress it with my praise. Oh my God. You're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. You are so beautiful. You are so beautiful. Oh my God. 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 Nobody to be like Jesus. Nobody to be like Jesus. Nobody to be like Jesus. Nobody to be. Nobody, 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 nobody. Nobody to be like Jesus. Yes. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. Rev, I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus in this place. Jesus. You may be seated if you can be seated.
you, Jesus. Thank 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 you, Lord. 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 Just drink. Just drink. Just drink. Refreshing. Energizing. Just drink. You are in His presence. 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 In moments like these, I sing the
know that I know that the presence of the Lord is among us. I know that I know he's so near you can touch him. I know that heavy burdens are being removed. Loads are disappearing. And I know that we are stepping into the glorious liberty of the sons of Almighty God. We have stepped into a new realm. We have stepped into a new dimension. Hallelujah! presence. When you come into Father's house, you must experience it. All the work, all the laborious task, all the sinful world with all of its allurements, wars and rumors of wars, deaths and murders, there must be a place that we can come to on planet Earth we can experience a tangible manifested presence of God 
when you lose yourself. Songwriter says, let me lose myself and find the Lord indeed. A good morning to all of you. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let me look at you, love. You put a smile on God's face. You put a smile on God's face. Don't let the devil tell you. Prophet, you put a smile on God's face. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. God is proud of all of his children. He never reminds you of what you did last year or the year before. He doesn't remind you of what you didn't do. He's proud of you anyhow. There are going to be better days. There are going to be better days in the Lord. Billy Garish, please tell your husband I love him. I greet you again, my wife and I. We prayed for you this week, and we know you prayed for us. Thank you for that session, Lady Riley. Thank you, Pastor Riley. I greet all the ministers in the house. Do remember Brother Ben, Dr. Ben and his wife, Dr. Millicent, from all the way up to Stone Hill, uh, and even further. Do remember the great prayers. I lost a very great friend who was one of my much visiting colleagues, Junior Demetrius. He just went to bed. Slept off. I'm afraid I cried. We were very, very good friends. We had migrated with his family to New York. He was one of their district bishops there. And uh, that's a good way to die. Didn't get an opportunity to say bye to everybody, but at least he just went on. He said our condolences to his wife. And then Lady Yolanda Linton, I couldn't give you that news last week about it coming into the pulpit. She, 70 plus, went on to be with the Lord. So do remember her. Uh, Andrea Linton and her granddaughter, uh, Andre, yes, they are there and they're taking care of business, they need our prayers, but she lived, lived well, do remember them in your prayers. I want to also remember that next week, well, this is the first day, so this week's Saturday, the children will be meeting. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, I got a call to say that the doctor who promised uh, one of says, uh, I want to go and pick up the best chicken for the children, and I want them to have rice and peas with grated. Um, uh, coconut juice and some other stuff to put with it. I want a, a full meal. I'm saying this and I'm doing this provocatively, yes. deliberately, yes. because we will treat these children with double honor. Yes. Children among them too. Yeah, Today we have Lady Palomino Higher with us, Lady Wendy. Palomino Higher. And that the Latin names, you know. And I stay, she was a member of our congregation, her and her husband, many years ago. And they went back to Canada. They're now living there, have been living there. But that's where Jennifer and I can be found. <laughs> when we leave here, they take the best care of us in their five star hotel. 
And uh, we just thought that it is good sometimes to reciprocate. Yes. So she is with us this morning in our house. Also, I was very happy to join her over this weekend. Come quickly, and I want you to come and greet us. Yes. I know I went into my time, but that's all right. This is not visitor, this is family. Right. Say family. Family. Yeah, she resembles too, eh? Yeah. God is good. God is great. Yes. He's gracious and kind. I am honored to be here and I'm given the privilege to come before. I didn't plan to, but let me greet first Bishop Owens and his wife, Reverend Jennifer Owens, and all the ministers. Prophet Landis, you always come every Sunday here? Okay, I knew I'd see you today. <laughs> That's for some reason. In any case, I greet all the brethren. This is where I love to come. Yes. I love Jamaica. I left here over 30 odd years ago, but every year I still come because I can't get enough. <laughs> anyway, God is good, He's faithful, He's kind. And as you know, during the pandemic, the country was shut down, the world was shut down. And on the theme of faithfulness and God goodness, I cannot stand here and not give God all the praise and glory. Yeah. Traveling, you have, it used to be easy, but you have to go through a lot to travel these days. Yeah. Yeah. Vaccine, uh, COVID tests, everything. And uh, 2020 was, a, 2020 before COVID began was the last time, January I was in the country. And uh, I was able to travel last year, November 21. I cried on the plane. I said, Lord, I thank you. It is a privilege and honor to travel. We don't take anything for granted. Yeah. And I couldn't get enough, so I'm back here again in March. <laughs> I want to tell you where the Holy Spirit uses me a lot, which I appreciate, is that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. Everywhere you go, I find the opportunity to make sure I big up my Jesus. Right. Big up Jesus every time. I want to say, from the I was concerned about the COVID test. I passed the test. Ooh, yeah. Even the traveling to the plane because we take it lightly, it is a lot stress to go through. The aircraft sat with some, um, actually some Chinese Jamaican. They were speaking like Chinese and they were they were locked away in Canada for two years because they were shut down for the pandemic, right? And even a just quick testament, God was good to me, make everything most work smoothly in arriving to Kingston, Jamaica. So a quick story is that I usually travel with a blue suitcase. And long story short, I had two suitcases. And um, I said, okay, one suitcase here, and I'm missing another one. The baggage handler says, I said, my name is Wendy, and we couldn't find it. He says, oh, go over to report the luggage. So I said, Lord, after you make everything work for me, this after having over 20 years of traveling, I miss a suitcase, I've never lost a suitcase. And anyways, I started to panic, as the flesh would want to do. But I remember as a mature Christian, you got to work the word, yes. work the word. Instead of panicking, I said, take a step. I said, God, you are ever present ever in the time of trouble. Yes. And I spoke the scripture and I had to calm my nerves down. I filled out the form. And as I finished off, there was other couples who lost their luggage as well. Then the same baggage hanger, remember him, is, he, um, he came over, he goes, you're Wendy? Because I told him my name. I said, yes, I am. But I said, that's not my suitcase. My mind was the blue suitcase. I always show the blue suitcase. <laughs> He goes, well, if you're not wearing it, that's too bad then. I said, if I saw my name, yes, yes, it's mine. And then, yes, I was so relieved. I wrote on the paper and said, thank you, Lord. So I had to go to the custom officer. The Lord ordained everything. Yeah. He could have told me already that he didn't travel with the suitcase, but he purposefully didn't allow me to recognize at the time because I was able to get to the custom without any problems. And the same baggage anger. You know, Jamaicans, they said, leave me with something. So I did give him something outside. And I said, before I give you this, I said, why do you always have to get something? That's your job to help me to find a suitcase. But nevertheless, I'm going to give you more. Why? But first, let me tell you about Jesus. Yeah. Let me tell you that you better serve him. So the moral of all this is that I believe the Holy Spirit allowed me because he knows I like to share the gospel. Yeah. So that young man, yeah. remember his name is Donovan. I said, Donovan, I'm going to pray for you. Yeah. So he was very friendly to me. And I made sure to tip him properly to say, just to spread Jesus loves you, and that you must be born again. So thank you for listening to me. I, my testimony is not maybe considered big, but you must hear what the Spirit is saying. God is faithful. God is faithful. An ever-present help in the time of trouble. Bless you all. Thank you for receiving me. Have a good day.
Thank you, thank you. It's a very wonderful lady, her and her husband. And uh, if you're ever going to Toronto, let me know. <laughs> I think you can go on. You, know? you are looking wonderful. You are in a house of love. Where everybody is somebody. Everybody is a bundle of blessing and a bundle of potentiality. Quickly turn your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I have not forgotten the sports they launch uh, on the 23rd of May. Uh, we're making every plan, Brother Pastor George, myself, Lady Marjorie, to get the sports things that we need for that special day of community activity. Uh, be praying with us and for us for the success of that. The book of First Corinthians, chapter 12, and I want to start at verse 12. You know, sometimes the present worship is a little bit too short. You need a little bit more. I don't know if you're like me, gluttons for the glory. And you know, we have a time constraint sometimes, but sometimes you just say, oh, shucks, I wish we could have gone on a little bit more. Well, praise God. Today we got brought to it, all right? The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12 reads, For as the body, for as the body is one and hath many members, one body, many members. Many members, one body. And all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. The Apostle Paul, the early church father, is explaining the body life concept. There are many metaphors that are called ecclesiastical metaphors. Metaphor, word pictures, that is giving us a picture of what the church is like, this unit, what the body of Christ is like. And there are many of them that is given, royal priesthood, holy nation, peculiar people, temple, family of God, house of God, community of believers, all across the world, there are certain expressions, certain terminologies, that are used to give expression to who we are in essence. The building is not the church. No, sir. We are more than a building. We are warmth, energy, expression, tangible. The devil is trying to shield us from knowing in certainty who we are. Because if we ever discover, my God, who we are, who God intended for us to be, God in Matthew one day, he got up and said, on this 
rock of revelation, I am going to build my church, construct, exercise. He's an architect. Architect. He is a planner. He's an architect. He is a master builder. He builds according to pattern. He is the pattern son. He has a pattern of everything you see down here on earth. He has that in heaven. A blueprint. You are a blueprint of something that existed somewhere before he spoke you and I into existence. That's why you are not DVTV. You are not ordinary. You are one of a kind. Your mold is in heaven. You are not a carbon copy. The devil is intimidated by you every time you get up, stand up, and walk out. You are not a failure. Even if you fail and fail and fail and fail, you're not a failure. Failure is not final. You are one of a kind. Your mold is in heaven. Nobody has the type of eyelashes that you do. Yes, sir. Your texture of hair makes you one of a kind in the universe. God made certain nobody had the same fingerprints. You are unique, set apart, separate, set on a pedestal. I don't know how he gets the devil, people to commit suicide. He must bring you to total nothingness. But you don't believe in the exquisite, refined, defined specimen of God's glory that you are. Jesus. Every day the devil looks at you, he gets a headache. Because there is just a uniqueness a distinction, a distinctiveness about you. Did you look in the mirror this morning? Every day you are to do like me. Six foot two. Tall and handsome. And I literally say it to myself. If I don't smile at me, who is going to do it? In Africa, they say, you don't call, let them call you anything they want. You first put a name on yourself. So before Jennifer walked me up the aisle, I was in a cool, cool environment of and said, Mary, oh, glory, I feel something coming on now. And it's not my socks in my shoe. I loved me, and I still love me. And I will never love me when there's no one else to love me. I have so much love, I am giving it away. I just get up every day and say, give me some of that. Yeah. And the devil is so embarrassed, him don't come in my yard anymore. There's no reason to come. No, there is no reason to come. Shower yourself with love. Are you with me? Because you are unique. You are individual. You are distinct. You are compact. You are complete. 
dear to never call somebody like you ugly. It's because he is ugly. <laughs> but not you. And you know what ugly is? Beyond ugly. <laughs> That's the devil. But anytime he brings a negative across you, just look in the mirror. And since these are days that they're wearing masks, take off your mask. You know, call why? In a Texas. You are God's representative in the earth. You are fearfully and wonderfully made your name. When you're looking in the mirror, don't hang down your head. You have too many persons on your shoulder that believes in you. Be like the rest of man when lightning flash in pause. It's like, hold on there, hold on there, hold on there. I can't get the same pose for every shot. That's someone is very proud of so I'm calling girlfriend Queen. Go him to and think something about himself and impress. Nobody impress nobody. Just be who you are. Be. When God made you, He says, "Be." I get to find out that human being means a judge. Tell me, as a judge, then my come over, Pastor George says, "The I N G and being." And God made you, he says, be, but the being part means you start to exist beyond the realm and dimension of just being there. I'm just like, thank you, Judge. May I preach it? See, may I preach it? I took it before, Judge. <laughs> judge, deep, you know, in a bad account. Margaret needs to share it more with the world. But beloved, there are certain metaphors, yes. certain word pictures are pictures in the word that God gives in the scripture to help to explain and to readily define the group of people called the church, the ecclesia, out of, brought out of. That track don't have taken out of the world into the church to demonstrate to the world this group of people. You see them, they're not giddy giddy. They're not just a dragged up group of people. And he used several terminologies to, 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 to define them. Family of God. One I want to focus on today, body of Christ, the temple of God, the people of God, the flock of God, royal priesthood, fellowship of believers, kingdom of believers, kingdom of God, called out ones. Mm -mm. And he put these designation upon them. Being a part of a group is a normal part of harmony and identity with a group of people. We're not just here like this. There's something that we find uniquely special about each other. Some things that are to be admired distinctives. I burst that door on a Sunday morning just to get a look at you, to get a hug at you, to smile right back at you. I am excited to know that you are feeling good and better this week than you were last week. I want to know that everything about you is okay and getting better. And if I can do anything to enhance that, if you hurt, I hurt. If you cry, me a ball too. I may not cry like a woman. 
That's because they don't want to wipe off the makeup. <laughs> but you notice how one wipe your face? <laughs> like in the field. <laughs> if you see my wife having my talk, watch out. Look at him touch. It's not true. Look at him touch. But the ladies, you know, they have to. The perspiration, the sweat, you know, and they don't want it to mess up the rag, uh, the handkerchief. Uh, and they do it very softly because they don't want to wipe on whatsoever they supposed to put on. Why do you think I sit downstairs every Sunday morning? <laughs> Squeezing my toe into my boots. Hmm? So, so I'm like, right. I stand corrected. <laughs> Incidentally, Marlene is not going to take up the assignment in India again. It was afraid of me hard. So she not took it up. And for good reasons, Marlene, they have the time. Just spread on against another assignment because one may come up. Just pray, keep praying. But for right now, Marlene, they are. But beloved, the purpose of this message is to say, do you know your worth? Oh, do you know your value? Oh. Do you know what substance you are and how substantial you are that God has defined your worth? Hmm? Start thinking about yourself in a different light. One of the things that he says about you, you are the body of Christ. You are God's representative. When people see you, they should see God in action. God in demonstration. Christ, that's why you are Christians. You are Christ-like of the anointed. Lift up your shoulder. Square up your shoulder. Mm? Begin to see yourself in the light that God sees you. You are a winner and not a failure. You are a success and not a defeat. You're going over and not under. You're a success achievement oriented king. You are born for success and not failure. There is no failure about you. You're a winner and a victor. You're not a victim. You're like oil. You swim on top of water. There's something that keeps you afloat. All when you're in school. I was one of the baddest boys in school. I mean, we can't fight, you know. But now, pay attention. My wife and I was laughing this morning because there was a preacher. And the tea again, he says, he got a half scholarship. Yeah. Half, you know what I'm thinking, the teacher? Yeah. The colonial system used to mess up with it. Yeah. Yeah. When well, you know one give you a full scholarship, then give you half. Yeah. And then you go thinking the word half. Yeah, big jail. Mm. It's, it's such a thing like half scholarship. And they mess up a lot of our children's future. But we wouldn't pay no attention. Marble. Games. Play rubber bands. Who show? And win the, the most amount of rubber bands. My wife will tell you what I have. <laughs> Attention deficit disorder. A big, nice boy like me. Tall and handsome. Six foot tall. Teacher, she never knew it. And I brought activity. <laughs> Marjorie, when I hear all of them definitions, I bust some toes. <laughs> eh? 
Prophet. Thank you, Prophet. Thank you, Prophet. Prophet just set me straight. If you've never had any room, some of them fear me long time. They never know some bright and bright beyond. Don't let them look at you until you have no form of deficit. Attention deficit. I'm going to pay attention to everything. But the lesson. But when God says, Never be. Katando Roboya. Robin, be. What you name you? Be. Nobody can unbe you. And that's why you are who you are today. Can't feel. Now I feel. Come on, get up and celebrate God. Open your mouth and praise Him. Keep your foot and praise Him. Clap your hands and praise Him. Open your mouth and say, Hallelujah! I could not have been kept down. Your parents might not have wanted to own you. They might have treated you badly. But God saw something good about you. Come on, lift up your hands and praise Him. Stand on the devil's head and give him a crush. Black eye. And up to now you can't feel yet. How many demons have come to your house and tried to push you down? Say to me, but God, but God, but God. Everyone has lost because God fashioned you, George Bailey, for something great. Hmm? I am a winner. I am a success. I am the kingdom. Not the tail. I'm coming over. Born to be a winner. Head and not the tail. Above always I've never been. Come on, we can preach. And you ain't seen nothing yet. Because I've come to set the captive free. I've come to set the captives free. I've come to set the captives free. And in my family, I'm a winner. I am a winner. The block, the box stop here. I am conqueror. Made to be a winner. Hey! Devil, you couldn't keep me down. Take the lid off of me. Come on, I'm here to set the captives free. Look out, devil, you soon see me. Not driving a Zephyr to, not driving a mash up bicycle. Somebody get on the head and not the tail. Jennifer couldn't hide. The spider was in St. Mary and she was in Kingston. And you are not the what left. You are not the left over. I'm speaking your destiny, speaking your future. You are present tense and not past tense. That's why you're a part of the church. spoken about you from school days up until now. The curse is broken. For us the curse. For us the curse. For us the curse. Every broom have a tick. Are you broom out there? I hear them hear you. I should have spent jealous over your success. Come on, pop style, pop the devil. Pop style on the devil. Pop style on the devil. Pop style on the devil. You're a winner. Winner, winner, winner. The winner, man. You are a winner. On your job, you're a winner. In the country, you're a winner. In town, you're a winner. Your children are winners. COVID, I am bouncing right back, better than I was before, out of order, 
square your shoulder. Put on your best face. Step forward. I'm not looking back. I'm not going back. Going upward, outward, forward. Pursue. Overtake. Recover. Everything. I might have been delayed, but I'm not going to be denied. I'm coming over the rough side of the mountain. That's what the devil is annoying about. Because you show signs of recovery. Signs of recovery. No curses on your children. Devil can't curse you. The curse can't be old. Can't hold. Come on. This is your year, your house, your car, your promotion, your job, restoration, recovery. Come on, tell somebody I'm coming over. Forcefully, deliberately, purposefully, sincerely. What is mine is mine and can't be on mine. All right. Beloved, stay. Focus. When you come into a place, man, you must feel motivated by the people around you. Yeah. No, no long down face. Yeah. No, no drag face. Yeah. No people not supposed to be giving you no cut eye. Yeah. You should be getting a push up. Yeah. You should feel motivated, yeah. energized, enlightened. Come on, talk to me. I want to be amongst a blessed people. They must be going somewhere. And everybody motivate somebody towards going where? Somewhere. In a place, man, I'm gonna bless you and people cut your eye for you. No, sir. That is not church. That is hell house. Church is where people begin to thank God on your behalf and feel good about your success, your dreams, your aspiration. Not Joseph's family want to put him down. Hmm? No man, you are a child of the king. Walk with some chip on your shoulder, yet with humility in your step. How did I get here? need some encouragement pastor you hear so much negative see so much negative <laughs> you want to come to God's house and when you leave you leave with a blessing in your heart that what you heard for that day made your week for the entire week I am prophesying to some of you this is your week of release this is your week of deliverance. Something is coming in the mail for you. And it's not because you envy everybody. It's because it's the right time. It's going to be time of release. Time of blessing. Time of increase. Time of prosperity. Kingdom is coming. Money coming. Money coming. Money coming. You should be struggling at the stage of your life for money. Money coming! your house. You're no longer from Moab. Are you listening to me? Can God bless a Moabite woman full of curse who God them say God no good on a Moab. Fifon. Hmm? Yet still a little woman named Rahab. She set up business upon the wall. And everything passed through there who are somebody have to come to her shop, her business place. And God said, what shall we go and do with Rhea? They said, God, no visit we. Lady Camille. But one day God says, let me come turn 
Alpha Truck. Let my real yard. Ray of yard. One piece of worship back to my real of yard. Jesus went into the inn and she became the great, great, great grandmother of Jesus. Out of prostitution, can God see a prostitute? Come on, say with me, purpose. Many of you in this very place today, say with me, purpose. Had it not been God, had it not been the Lord that was on my side, we wouldn't be there. Can he visit you and Jericho wall? Can he put a silver loin in tread? And make an hold with the people of God. This is what God is doing. Some people who couldn't get saved before are getting saved now. And are being pulled into the kingdom of Almighty God. Some done, some done it. Eh? God says, Come. You know what Rehab says? I was listening to Sister Jennifer. Rehab says, For your God. Yeah, yeah. is God above and God beneath we have got a revelation of who God was who God is and who God will be and Rehab says he ought to be on a phone already a phone alive because when I heard what God did to fear and to Pharaoh's army in the Red Sea. She said, every courage left for me, man. Every spirit left my heart. And I know that God, the true God of heaven, was your God. And I him me I serve. She could have died. It could have meant her life. But she said, now hold on. Me now let off half of them two spies here. And all me want you to remember when you're coming back to remember me. That's all me want. Remember me brother. Remember me sister then. Remember me mother and me father. And as a result, they put up a silver loin in cord. That means redemption. So in a rare blinker house, there was salvation, deliverance, healing, my God, prosperity. I am saying it's coming to your house. Put up the silver lining cord. Put up the deliverance. Put up the healing. Put up. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. You will never have to take in another customer after them two boys then. And the Bible says in Hebrews 11, 31, it was accounted to her for her righteousness. Her works of feet from zero to a hundred. That's what God is doing to you today. He is bringing redemption, healing, and deliverance to your family and to Jamaica. Can any good thing come out of? We yeah. are. That thing there. He dealt with it. We yeah. are. In your body. Physically. Mentally. Emotionally. Spiritually. Financially, he sees your pain and he shed tears on your behalf. And with all that you've been going through, you're still wearing a smile. You're still able to laugh. And there's still a smile on your face. When the pain rocks your body and you don't know where to turn, what to say, what to do. You find a corner and you begin to pray. God says, I hear. God says, I know. Come on, help me praise God. Come on, help me worship God. Help Kuya praise God. Rejoice on Kuya's behalf. Praise because Kuya prays. Sing because Kuya sing. Clap because Kuya clap. Come on, say hallelujah. Help me say hallelujah. Hallelujah for her household. 
Hallelujah for her family. Hallelujah for her daughters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for her house. Her household. Just like Rena. There is a silver loin in court. All of the message makes up. Can't bring it back by truck again, no matter how. But, 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 sometimes we forget mess up. God wants to bring joy, laughter, happiness, gladness in the house. We have too much fixation and salvation. I forgot to say that you have to be so nice and cool. The woman took her entire eight years wage and purchased the all the box to books of ointment. Nobody no invite her at the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the party. And she reached a house where Jesus did. And no say, fear lifestyle is so. And Jesus is a prophet. And in the olden days, you shouldn't even touch the prophet. Let alone come into the same environment or uh, encirclement. And the people in the district see her and say, today. Look at their church today. And all of them are talking about it. And when she was a woman, Eve, not on nothing. Come on. And when we see her last night, wonder why did I do that last night? <laughs> And she wiped his feet with her tears, washed it with her hair, and wiped it, and then anointed him unto his burial. And she never stopped crying, and she never went before him. She knelt behind him where his feet was exposed. And oh, God. Jesus moved. Brethren, God is going to come in this nation and save a group of people who were undesirables, who were not candidate to be saved. He's going to cause a revival to come in Jamaica of men, women, and children with compassion. He's going to love them, take them up in his arms, and bless them. And bring the woman caught in the, the act of adultery and said, Jesus, missing the woman and the man myself. And Jesus, she couldn't even get to put back her clothes on. Jesus listened to the story and he wrote something on the ground, but nobody ever asked. If you're caught her in the act, one person can't perform the act. Where is the man? If I want big stone around this song, ready to clap the woman in her head. The stone weighs more than five pounds. And with shame she forward. And Jesus said, He who is without sin, cast the first stone. Don't be legalistic. Don't be judgmental. Don't be regimental. And she took all the abuses and heard the things that were thrown at her. And Jesus says, neither do I condemn thee. Nevertheless, go thy way and sin no more. They didn't know <clears throat> that the moral of the story only one who could cast the first stone is the one who caught in the act. He wanted the one who caught her in the act. How unjust the society was against women and still is against women because they see the man as being more correct no matter how unjust he was. And she went away shamed no more. Abuse no more. God is looking for those type of people in our nation. And Christians, be careful. Some of you don't show too much of a self-righteous attitude. You really need humility, simplicity, transparency.
for what God is going to do right now in the midst of Jamaica. I can't go any further today because I never broached this message. I never had any intention. None of this was in my notes, but I know the love of God is reaching down, is reaching out to people. Oh, love of God! So rich! Keep helping. Oh, major! It shall forevermore. It shall forevermore endure the saints and days. So.
understand it. Right where you may be seated. I don't even want you to leave your seat necessarily to expose yourself, but right where you are, the love of God right now is able to reach you. And if any one of our ministers wants to walk from where you are and go stand over somebody's seat where they are, would you please do that? Maybe somebody's a little bit nervous, a little bit shaken, a little bit insecure. All they need is for somebody to walk up to them. And like Jesus in Mark 9, just extend to them an extended hand. Come right over your chair and pray with you. Please, please reach over to somebody. A young man, a young woman, a young lady that needs encouragement, that needs support. Please, just let somebody, Almighty God, receive the love of God through your life, through your touch, to your reach. Oh God, so rich and pure. So much of this. God's forgiveness, God's mercy. I know, I know, I know. Thank you. 